Let's talk some more about how I would design my perfect Pokemon game. If you haven't seen part one in this series, the link is in the iCard, and you should watch the whole thing, but here's a quick recap. I would not want to be bound by the traditions of Pokemon games. The battles would stay mostly the same, and there would be obviously some way of collecting Pokemon, but just about everything else can be changed. And I would begin the process of developing the game with good writing, not just in terms of the story and the dialogue and the characters, but also in things like how the game shepherds the players around. Today I want to cover some more specifics, but if you're expecting me to go into details about things like plot and characters and where the region would be based on and which Pokemon I would include, that's not what this video or even this whole series is all about. This isn't like a Mr. Buddy if I made a Pokemon region video. I might make a video like that at some point, talking about how I would make regions based on parts of Brazil and Canada, but this series is more about how I would like the games to function. In today's video in particular, I'm going to focus on things related to battling. I would like to see a lot more variety in the checkpoints of your adventure, which is basically the role that gyms serve nowadays. So for example, I could imagine a game where you're a PhD student venturing deep into Zelda-like dungeons to collect Pokemon, and maybe you're even explicitly writing Pokedex information based on what you see and what you can measure. And so you'd have to find every Pokemon in a dungeon, and when you do, that's when your advisor rewards you with access to more areas, and you can continue your adventure that way. But what I actually wanted to talk about today is a format a little bit closer to what we already know. Gyms that actually teach competitive concepts and strategies. I'm a big supporter of making competitive Pokemon more accessible, and I think this would be a great way to go about it. I think the last time a Pokemon game actually taught you advanced battle strategies was Earl's Pokemon Academy in Stadium 2. Generation 7 did have some root kahunas that demonstrated specific strategies, but that was nothing compared to Earl's Academy. Earl was explicitly about teaching, and it was very thorough for the time, and you wouldn't even pass the class just by winning the battle. You had to win with the strategies that you were being taught. It was one of my favorite features of Stadium 2, and probably the only reason I decided to try my hand at my first and only in-person competition. So in this case, gyms would not be themed around types, but around concepts. Early gyms might teach things like type matchups and status conditions and basic held items and abilities. And maybe also the battle gimmick of the generation, although I don't think there necessarily needs to be one. Mid-game gyms might focus on common strategies like Trick Room, Tailwind, and Weather, and they might also cover Natures and maybe more advanced held items and abilities. Advanced gyms would probably be the ones to teach about things like EVs and IVs. And you might notice that that probably adds up to more than 8 gyms, which is totally okay. I think you could get away with grouping some concepts, like having a single gym cover all status conditions, or doing both Trick Room and Tailwind in a speed control gym, but I think it would actually be really interesting to have a lot of small gyms, kind of like the shrines in Breath of the Wild. But here's the biggest difference that I would like to see. All gym battles would be in VGC format, or a simplified version of the VGC format since the actual VGC rule set does change. But basically I'm thinking double battles where you take six Pokemon in and pick four for the actual battle, no duplicate Pokemon or duplicate held items, all of your Pokemon's levels are set to the same level, and you can't use items like potions and the like during the battle. The rest of the game would be a mix of other battle styles, but the official league matches would all follow the stricter rules of VGC. And if you're worried about experience, I figure all the battle's experience can just be gained at the end of the battle, since it wouldn't really make sense to gain experience during the battle when your levels don't change. The rewards for the gym would probably include something symbolic along the lines of badges, and some of them might also grant access to new areas of the game, but for this kind of gym, I would really like to see the rewards match the challenge of that particular gym. So when you beat the Tailwind gym, you get the TM for Tailwind. When you beat the Ability gym, you get an Ability Capsule and you start being able to buy them at Marts. And maybe there's even a later gym that unlocks Hidden Ability Capsules. When you beat the EV gym, you gain access to the mechanisms that help you gain and reset EVs. Same with the IV gym. And maybe there would even be a way to easily see and control the exact EVs and IVs of your Pokémon. That way, when you reach the end of the game, you already have a lot of experience in the format, and because you've been slowly unlocking the methods to improve your party members, when you beat the Champion Cup, you basically already have a solid team that you can take to real, in-person competitions. 
But that's not the only advantage I see in this format, because for me, it would be the perfect level of difficulty. I think I've talked before about how Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 were the perfect level of difficulty for me, and that's what this would emulate. You have set opponents with set teams, which for Pokemon they pick for a particular battle might change, but after you've battled them once, you always know which teams and which strategies you need to be prepared for. You're not going up against an unknown opponent every time. I've never played Pokemon Battle Revolution, so I don't know if that game had a similar kind of structure, but either way, it's been a long time since we've had something like this. You would still want the gyms to have a difficulty curve, and if we're not doing that based on levels, because levels are being set to the same no matter what, then that curve would have to come from which Pokemon they have, which moves they use, and even their EVs and IVs. Which is also how you'd be able to grind, so to speak, in order to gain an advantage over the gym trainers. Now, this is my perfect Pokemon game, and I hate grinding, I like challenging battles, and I never want to be more than a couple levels above my opponents, but I can still see an advantage to grinding in this format because your Pokemon might evolve, they might learn better moves, they would even have a chance to gain more EVs. As for the Champion Cup, I love what Sword and Shield did with you having to battle against the other gym challengers and also bringing in gym leaders that you've already battled against. And I think that it would actually go a step further and introduce other strong trainers, like past gym challengers, maybe some known characters from other games, maybe even the professor participates or your mom. What I think is important is that the Champion Cup should have you facing off against a random set of opponents, similar to the Champion Cup rematches in Sword and Shield. In that case, you know how your opponent's teams work, but you don't know which opponents you're going to face. And I love that, and I think it could actually work really well as the main game Champion Cup. Especially in a game that teaches so much, but in a structured, predictable way, this would be your first challenge against the unknown. You might still have a set champion character that you have to battle after, say, four battles, but those four battles would be randomized. And then in the post-game, the Battle Tower and the Champion Cup rematch could just be the same thing. I said in the first part of this series that I think the battles should remain pretty much constant across games, even when just about everything else about them may change. But there are some changes to the battles themselves that I would like to see. Some of them are pretty minor. For example, I think it would be interesting to see a change to Confusion so that when the Pokémon hurts itself, it actually uses the move you selected against itself. I think that would make Confusion moves more interesting, it would make special attackers more susceptible to Confusion, it would also add a layer of complexity when you're selecting which move to use when your Pokémon is confused, and it would even make the move flatter actually useful. Another change I would like to see is something that I have mentioned before, I think Pokemon should have a property of being airborne or not, and moves would have a property of targeting Pokemon that are airborne or not. It doesn't really make sense for some Weezing to be hit by Earthquake just because it doesn't have Levitate when all Weezing clearly float. And we already have move properties like Makes Contact or Is Sound Based, so why not one for being airborne? And related to that, something else that I've mentioned before, I would like to see the terrain, the actual field that the battle takes place on, have an influence on which Pokémon and which moves can be used in them. Similar to Sky Battles from Generation 6, but expanded to more different kinds of terrain. I imagine Sky Battles for Pokémon that can fly or float and you can't use moves like Earthquake or Dive, Water Battles for Pokémon that can float or swim, and Land Battles for basically anything that doesn't need to live in water. I would want it to be a little bit more balanced than that, and I haven't come up with a nice balanced set of terrains, but I love the idea and I would definitely want to see it expanded on. Throughout the game you'd be encouraged to swap out your team depending on the terrain of the routes that you're traveling on, or maybe you'd want to craft that single perfect team that works equally well on any terrain. In the Gym Challenge, you would have some gyms happen on different terrains, and in the Champion Cup, maybe there are different terrains available for the battles. In actual competitive VGC, you could have different series that focus on the different terrains, similar to the Sun, Moon, and Ultra series of VGC 2019. It's not a perfect idea at this stage, but terrains would definitely be a part of my perfect Pokémon game. I think that's enough for today. There will be at least one more video in this series, but this time I'm actually fairly optimistic about fitting all of the rest into a single video. 
So let me know in the comments what you think of the changes that I've suggested, and if there's any specific topics that you would want to hear about in the next video, you can let me know about those as well. Just keep in mind, this is about my perfect Pokemon game, not what I think would be the perfect Pokemon game, because the perfect Pokemon game I think would have to appeal to everyone, to every kind of player, and here I'm just worried about my own preferences. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by leaving a like, if you're new here, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, and make sure to watch the first video in this series if you haven't already. Thank you to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. I'm Ombreon Libris, I'll see you in the next chapter.